Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We're reading from our prayer booklet today, The Daily Hedge of Protection. The Daily Hedge of Protection. In the name of Jesus, I bind the wills of every person, known and unknown, me, my family, our fellowship, and everyone known or named and unnamed to the will and mind of Christ. I bind our body, soul, and spirit to the mind, emotions, purposes, and will of God for our lives. I bind our mind, will, and emotions to the will of God. I bind us to the truth and the blood of Jesus. I bind our minds to the mind of Christ, that the very thoughts, feeling, and purposes of his heart would be within our thoughts. I bind our feet to the paths of righteousness, that their steps would be steady and sure. I bind each of us to God's timing in our lives. I bind us to the work of the cross with all its mercy, grace, love, forgiveness, and dying to self. I loose every old, wrong, ungodly pattern of thinking, attitude, desire, idea, behavior, motivation, habit, and behavior from us. I tear down, crush, smash, and destroy every stronghold associated with these things. I loose any stronghold in our lives that has been justifying and protecting hard feelings against anyone. I loose the strongholds of unforgiveness, fear, and distress from us. I loose the power and effects of deceptions and lies from us. I loose confusion, blindness of the God of this world from our mind that has kept us from seeing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I call forth every precious word of scripture that has ever entered into our mind and heart, that it would rise up in power within us. In the name of Jesus, I loose the power and effects of any harsh words or word curses spoken to, about, or by us. I loose all generational bondages and associated strongholds from us. I loose all effects of bondages and associate strongholds from us that may have been caused by mistakes we have made. Father, in the name of Jesus, I crush, smash, and destroy generational bondages of any kind from the mistakes made at any point between generations. I destroy them right here, right now. They will not bind and curse any more members of these families. I bind the strong man, Satan, that we may spoil his house, taking back sevenfold every material and spiritual possession he has wrongfully taken from us. I loose the enemy's influences over every part of our body, soul, and spirit. I loose, crush, smash, and destroy evil, every evil device he may try to bring into our sphere of influence during this day. I loose all negative influences of the world from us. I crush, smash all deceptions the enemy may try to use to confuse us. I tear apart, crush, crush and rip asunder the effects of the enemy in every area of our life. Finances, families, homes, work, businesses. I bind and loose all these people named. In Jesus' name, God has given me the authority, the keys, and the authority to do so. I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. All these things we ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God. Amen, family. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see everybody today. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you for joining today. Thank you for joining us today. 
Praise God. Hope you guys had a great day yesterday. As you see, we're still inside. The California fires are the, the California fires are still out of control. So that's why we're inside. I posted a picture yesterday on Facebook. Uh, and I think I posted on, on the uh, YouTube page too. The smoke. You can see the sun in the middle of the day directly. It looks like the moon. The sun looks like the moon at 2 o'clock in the uh, afternoon because there's so much smoke. And you can taste the smoke. So when you can taste the smoke, it's beyond smelling the smoke when you can taste it. So the Holy Spirit said, no, stay inside. <laughs> stay inside to further notice. And as you know, when I did in indoors before, when I had my knee surgery, that's when I learned we could do it indoors and just have to find the right room so wake up any neighbors when I'm singing. So that's why if you, if you hear me singing, kind of pull back in the car. In the car, I just sing I just sing completely out loud. But in the morning, it's 6.30 in the morning. Remember, it's 6.30 in the morning here at 6.45. So I have to try to make sure I'm not singing at the top of my lungs. Have people say, what is that noise? <laughs> I'm praising God right now. Leave me alone. I'm praising God. <laughs> Amen. So uh, welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Angel. I see Sister Angel join us. Angel's an OG from way back. Welcome. I'm glad you're able to join us again, Sister Angel. Welcome back. Welcome back. And I think I think I got everybody else who came in as you came in. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now today, today our lesson, uh, our lesson, spiritual, spiritual awareness. Is that right, Donna? <laughs> spiritual. Uh, it, well, yeah, well, that that picture, uh, snurky number the picture. Yeah, it is surreal. It, there's one picture I posted earlier of all the places, of all the places where the fires are out of control. It it looked like the gates of hell. I mean, literally. There's about six pictures put together in this in this collage of pictures, and the fire was out of control in all these pictures. And I serious, I said, man, if 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 hell is worse than that, I definitely make sure I don't go. <laughs> if, if there's no motivation beyond that, I'm telling you, there's motivation right there. Amen. Welcome, brother John. Amen, brother John. Brother John and Daniel. Hey, brother John. Welcome back, brother John. Amen. Spiritual awareness. Spiritual awareness. Now I could have easily, I could have easily had another title for this. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of playing with your mind today because spiritual awareness is something we've already talked about. We just didn't say spiritual awareness. But when you're, when you're listening to the Holy Spirit in every environment, in every atmosphere, wherever you go, when you're listening to the environment, remember, no greetings, no message time. No greetings, guys. No greetings, no message time. So whenever we're talking about, whenever you're talking about spiritual awareness, you're really, you're really listening to the Holy Spirit. That's what's happening. You're really listening to the Holy Spirit, whenever, whenever you, uh, whenever you uh, take the time, and you think, wait a minute, what is going on? What's going on? I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. When you're paying attention to what's going on around you, the spiritual awareness is coming from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is letting you know something's not right, something's not right here, and the Holy Spirit is letting you know. Sometimes, sometimes it's a feeling. Sometimes, sometimes it's a voice. Uh, you need. You need, you need to get out of here. You're in the wrong place. What do you mean wrong place? Don't even ask questions. If the Holy Spirit tells you you're in the wrong place, don't say, what do you mean by that? Get gone. <laughs> Let me say that again. If you're in the wrong place and the Holy Spirit tells you through a quiet voice or feeling you're in the wrong place, don't sit there and say, what do you mean by that, Holy Spirit? No. Get gone. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is telling you right now something dangerous is about to happen right now. And if there's no other time than night right now, right now, in today's time, like never before, we need to be aware every second of the day. When you step out of your door, you better have your spiritual awareness beacon on as soon as you leave the house. Because today's times are crazy. You got all the chaos, the violence, the racism, shootings. I mean, you got all kind of crazy stuff going on. Now, even though we walk out with Psalm 91 protection, part of Psalm 91 protection is listening to the Holy Spirit. When you're under the shadow of the Almighty, you're so close to Him that you're going to hear Him give you guidance. You're going to hear Him tell you the Holy Spirit. See, He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. That's why He's in us. The part of God is in us to talk to us, to tell you when you're in the wrong place, to tell you how to make a decision, to tell you right from wrong. And I'm going to read that. Going, uh, as I'm saying this, turn to, turn to John chapter 16. Turn to John chapter 16. We're going to read that in just a minute. So, so the point I'm trying to make, understand, we've talked about the Holy Spirit before. But in spiritual awareness, I'm trying to make sure we understand that 
it is the Holy Spirit that lets us know if somewhere is safe or not, or that you're going the wrong way, or the way you chose is dangerous. And don't, and I never question, if you feel that direction today is the wrong way to go, trust it. Go the other way. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. I see. I used to practice, and we should do this. We should do this every day. Trust the Holy Spirit in everything you do. And this is how I, this is how I practice. I'm going down the freeway, and we have two freeways in Los Angeles that can be nightmare, nightmare freeways. Now, when I'm leaving my house, one freeway goes this way, the other freeway goes that way. Either one of these freeways could stop. And you'd be sitting there for hours. Now, the one to the right, usually, we call the 405, usually it's always a nightmare. Now, I'm driving along, and I'm driving along, and I see, here it comes. Here comes the fork in the road. And I'm saying, Holy Spirit, which way, which way, which way? Now, now in my flesh, I'm in a hurry. I got a decision to make. 405 freeway or the 5 freeway. 405 is usually always backed up. So I'm asking the question, which way do I go? And the Holy Spirit said, four or five. And then here I go, here I go, four or five. But God, that's always backed up. So what do I do? I go the other way and it stops. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit, go the way where it's normally backed up. But I said, no. And then here I, here I am telling the Holy Spirit that that's the wrong way. So I go the other way, and it stops. As soon as I hit it, the traffic stopped. There was a major accident. So that means with a major accident, going slow is better than not moving at all. <laughs> I may be only moving five miles an hour on the bad freeway, but the other freeway isn't moving at all. And Holy Spirit knew that. But me and my flesh, my flesh, no, that's always backed up, God. God, that's always backed up. I better go this way, and it stopped. <laughs> See, that's me trying to act like I know what God's going to say. That's me, myself, and I trying to tell God I know which way is best. Not. So let's get that straight right now. We don't know anything about anything the other beyond what we can see. God's got God's gonna got an atmospheric point of view. He's looking down the freeway. He knows exactly what's the right way to go every single time. Amen, Deanne. That's right. Every time he knows exactly what the right decision is. We have to what? Trust. Trust. <laughs> see, why, why is it so hard for us to trust? Because we like to be in control. Answer. Answer simple. We like to be in control. But trust in the Holy Spirit. You're not in control. You're trusting the Holy Spirit. Trust, Lord, with all your heart. Lean not. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, including this. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. I've got the five We're talking about this time. One second now. Talking about this time, didn't plug the phone in. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. All your ways. In all your ways, all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. So in all your ways means we got to keep trusting. We got to keep trusting the entire time. So that's what that's why we that's why we have to just let go and let God do what he does. He's the one in charge. He's the one in control. He's the one we must listen to every single time. Every time, not sometime, in all your ways, not some of your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So that's why, that's that's right, I, I'm saying, wait, Miss T, I'm saying, wait, that, that day, that day was my being, <laughs> I learned the hard way. I, you think running late, running late, when I went on that wrong freeway, I was an hour late. I was, I was, I would have been barely late if I went the slow freeway, but when I hit that freeway to stop, I was an hour late. See now, see now, the lesson being, don't think you know better than God. Don't think you know better than the Holy Spirit who's talking to you. He's talking to you and telling you. He's talking to you. He's telling you. And uh, let me know you connected, Jonna. You back in Jonna? I'm not on my screen, but I have. It's still about 30 seconds off. Praise God, family. Praise God. Praise God. You, you guys are about 30 seconds delay after me, so I'm waiting first to, for it to come back on. Amen. Tell me when you see your screen, John. Praise God. Amen. Amen. No, not yet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 
Amen. I see Sister Deanne's come back here. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome back, everybody. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. The, the, praise God. We're back. Amen. 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 Praise God. See everybody coming back in. Glory to God. Praise God, family. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> my bad. See, we remember now. We're, we're this is our first day. Our first day back inside. So our first day back inside. So the setup is a little bit different. And I forgot to. I'm so used to the the phone being plugged in the car, but I didn't plug the phone in the wall. <laughs> I had everything else plugged in except the phone. <laughs> and so my, uh, my, my apologies again. That, that, that wasn't the devil. That, that was me forgetting to plug everything up. This is a completely different setup inside. So I've, I've got to remember all the ways to, to redo the, the message inside. Amen. So welcome back, guys. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Amen. As I as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. <laughs> We're just talking about trusting the Holy Spirit. We're just talking about trusting the Holy Spirit. And that's that's what it's all about trusting the Holy Spirit, and and and, that, and that's that's important. We already know that we we've already talked about trusting the Holy Spirit. But I just thought it's funny that they died as I was saying. You gotta remember this. You gotta remember this. Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I'm so glad. Amen. We're back. We're back. Now, now the phone is low, but at least now it's in the wall. It's going to start uh, charging as I'm talking to you guys. Now I want you. I want to share right quick. We I talked to turn to turn to John sixteen. John 16, and we're just talking about spiritual awareness. Now, the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about what Jesus told the disciples about the Holy Spirit. But why just share with you about making decisions in everyday life when you get that feeling to turn the right way, to make the right or wrong decision. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. That feeling, sometimes it's a feeling, sometimes it's a quiet voice. Sometimes you just say something. A lot of people say, something told me, something told me. No, well, that's something that the Holy Spirit told you. Now, if you're not saved, see God. God is. See, God. Even I love. I love the way God created us. Even before you saved, God had put something in us to feel if something's right or wrong. Have you noticed that? Even before you got saved, something said. Do you say that motherly instinct? They, they used to call it motherly instinct, or sometimes the 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 feeling that you're not in the right place. Even before you saved, God created us with a a, 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 uh, a device in us to let us know if it's right or wrong, even before the Holy Spirit comes in us when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So when you say he saved me, he saved us from stuff before we were saved. How many times, think about everything in your past, even before you were saved, something happened that you say, wow, something told me not to go there tonight. Something told me, now in that case, the something is still something God put in you. The intuition, yes, the intuition is still something God put in us until we receive Jesus and the Holy Spirit comes in and tells us even more details. But we are created with the intuition to feel right from wrong, to feel, oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. See, he even knows before we receive Jesus, he knows that we're going to need some guidance. So he built in us, he built within us, even then, he built something in us to, to let us understand when to do or not do something, just by feeling. So that's, but that's but God, but God. He created something to take care of us even before we received him. <laughs> I love that. He, we were created to be, to, now, now, for those who don't listen to, to intuition, some people have the intuition, and they don't listen to that either. They don't listen to intuition, they don't listen to the Holy Spirit, and they keep falling. They keep falling because they don't pay attention to what the feeling is at that time, or they hear the Holy Spirit and don't obey. See, if you don't obey the intuition, when it's come time to receive the Holy Spirit, you're not going to listen to the Holy Spirit either because you didn't even listen to the intuition that was trying to tell you, don't do that. And now you got the Holy Spirit living in you, and you still don't listen, and you still fall. Because you're being disobedient to what God has put in you to help you not walk the wrong road. So see, <laughs> push, push the override. Yeah, they push the override button and say, no, I'm going to do my thing. I, I got to do my thing. Well, guess what? Your thing going to make you fall. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do your thing. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's look at John 16. John 16, verse 1 through 15. John 16, verse 1 through 15. Now, this is what Jesus is talking to the disciples to try to explain to them about the Holy Spirit. He's calling him the comforter. Let's start at verse 1. 16, verse 1. These things I've spoken to you so you may under so that you may be kept from stumbling. They will make you an outcast from the synagogue. But an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he is offering service to God. These things they will do because they have not known the Father or me. And right there, he's talking about the synagogue. He's talking about the synagogue. That's that's the way, that's why they try to kill Jesus. They don't know him. That's why they try to kill him. He's healing people and they hate him because he's doing works that he says is God and not even understanding what that is. So that's what that's why I said understand that. Now, verse 3. These things they will do because they have not known me, the Father. Now, but these things I have spoken to you, so that when the hour comes, you may remember, you may remember that I told you of them. These things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me and none of you are asking me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Verse eight, and he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness. Judgment concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgments, because of the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he the spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears. He will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me. For he will take time, for, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said he takes of mine, and he will disclose it to you. See, that's that's when you hear me say the part of God that lives inside of us, that's how he's, com how he's communicating with us. The, the Holy Spirit, the God part of us, the Holy Spirit is in us. Jesus is interceding for us to the Father. See, we're connected. When we say connected, we're connected to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. Jesus is interceding for us. To the Father, He was over us. So all three parts of the, the, the Trinity are working when you are connected. So now, when you feel like you're in the wrong situation, and you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you and saying you're in the wrong place, or you make a make the wrong decision, and you hear the voice telling you what not to do, this is why we have to trust because we don't know everything. Like like I said in verse, uh, even though even though at that time He's talking about, look at verse uh, verse. Um, Verse, in the verse where you say the Holy Spirit will tell you, uh, let's see, that is, go back right here, I want to make sure we get the verse where I want, right here, look at, look at verse, um, wait, oops, take it in one second, here you go, verse 13, verse 13. Look at verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose it to you what is to come. Now this is giving you here both the understanding of what's in the word. He's going to teach you what you need to understand. He gives us understanding because when you're praying for more understanding, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives it to you because you're now seeking it. We talked about that the other day. When you're seeking the truth and the Holy Spirit sees you seeking the truth, he gives you a revelation of understanding because you're ready for the truth. 
So that's why when you keep seeking for the truth and you keep studying the word and you keep reading the word and you're praying every day, the Holy Spirit sees us seeking to get closer and closer to God. And because we're seeking to get closer and closer to God, he reveals more to us. Because now we're ready to understand it. If you're not ready to understand it, he's not going to reveal to you something that you're not ready to understand. That's why Jesus said earlier, I would tell you more if I thought you could bear it. But they couldn't bear it. They're still trying to understand that point, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus knows that. Now, with spiritual awareness, our lesson of the day, our lesson today is part of the obedience part of listening to the Holy Spirit. Spiritual awareness is whenever the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us what is going on. You might be going into a place you don't know. And the Holy Spirit will, the Holy Spirit will either give you a peace, a, a feeling of peace, or a feeling of unrest. Now, you may not even understand, why do I feel at unrest? I'm just walking into a building. I'm walking into a building. I'm just, I, don't know, I don't know this building. I'm going into the building, and all of a sudden... I feel unrest. Now something is, something, not something, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. The reason you feel at unrest is because something, uh, you know what, I know I, I'm supposed to be here today, but I don't, I don't, I don't like this feeling. I, I, I just, I just don't feel right. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to re, reschedule my appointment and you leave. And about an hour later, somebody comes in and shoots up the building. Why? The Holy Spirit knew something's going to happen that day. You didn't. You don't even know. You don't even know the building. You just coming in for an appointment, and you just get this, you get this ominous feeling. Uh, I don't know what this feeling is, but something's not right. Something's not right. Uh, let me let me reschedule. And see, we have to pay attention to that. If you walk into place and there's joy and there's peace and you feel love, okay, that's that's that relaxation is telling you the spirits around you. Now, the warning the warning doesn't have to be danger. The warning could be somebody's about to lie to you. The warning could be somebody who's not filled with the Holy Spirit, who's going to steal your joy. The warning can be anything. We have to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Somebody, somebody might walk up to you, and they walk up to you, and you feel the same feeling. Now, that's not, they're, not, they're not going to shoot you. That feeling is this person is not of the Spirit. Spirit, no spirit. If someone walks up to you, and they're filled with hate, you feel it. Someone walks up to you and they're lying to you. Something's not right about what they just said. See, as, as they come on to you, whether speaking, they walk up to you, your, your, your spirit feels the truth. Your spirit feels the truth. We have to trust the, what the spirit is telling us. See, we don't, we, we get, like I, did, like I did that day with the freeway, sometimes we get too intellectual. Like I said to the Holy Spirit, well, the Holy Spirit, that way is always backed up. He didn't ask me a question. He said, go that way. And here I come, the flesh. But God, that way, that way is always backed up. I'm going to go this way. And it stopped. See, that was our intellect. Lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes this is our enemy. Not the devil. This sometimes is our enemy. The flesh, the other enemy. The flesh wants to do what it wants to do. The flesh always wants to be in control. The flesh is sometimes our biggest enemy because it wants things now and it wants what it can see. We can't see. I can't see which way to go. So I got to trust. I just I just said a prayer. Uh, Lord, let me know, Lord, which way do I go? I just said a prayer. And then <laughs> I just said the prayer, Lord, which way do I go? He gives me the answer. And I say, but God, that way is always backed up. He just gave me the answer. Go this way. And I said, but God. That way is always backed up like I know what's going on. I'm going to go that way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go my way and don't get nowhere. <laughs> Excuse my double negative. Don't get nowhere. <laughs> you see, that's, the, that's the, the leaning to your understanding. I leaned to my understanding because it didn't make sense to me. I couldn't see the fact. I couldn't see which way was best. I just see two freeways. I had no idea which one has an accident on it and which one doesn't. But when you ask him which way to go, he tells you, trust it. Trust the answer. He just gave me the answer which way to go, and I got intellectual and went the other way and didn't get anywhere. And see, we do this, we do this with all kinds of things in our life. 
The Holy Spirit is trying to tell us the spiritual awareness. He's trying to tell you, uh, be, aware, be aware of this situation. You make an appointment. Be Pray before you go. Pray here. Uh, stop and pray. See, you get these messages because he, he's trying to tell us that you need to be aware right now. You need to be aware right now. So don't panic. Be aware. See, when you rush, you're not being aware. You're rushing. Amen, John. Amen. <laughs> what did you say? Right? Two freeways. Yeah, two freeways and you're in a hurry. Exactly. See, so when you're rushing, you can't hear the right decision because you're rushing. Your rushing is tell you. Now, Liz, that's very, now Liz, very good point. Now, you, Liz is saying, now, I, I did a lesson about this, Liz. I actually did a lesson about this. When you're in a hurry, are you hearing God's voice or the voice you want to hear? Are you hearing God's voice or the voice you want to hear? Meaning the answer you want to hear. Because sometimes, sometimes it's hard. And sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to wait for the, the peace of God to let you know. Sometimes the peace of God is what tells you. If you hear the voice and you do something and you don't feel peace, then sometimes, now the question here, now, now the question here is, is that voice you just heard, the, the Holy Spirit telling you not to do that? Or is that your fear that you did the wrong thing? See, that's why we, the reason we stand still every day is when you stand still and you keep feeling and hearing the Holy Spirit, what you're teaching yourself, every time you stand still, you're teaching yourself, how does the Holy Spirit speak to me? How does it feel when the Holy Spirit speaks to me? Sometimes it's a quiet voice. Learn that quiet voice. Remember that quiet voice. Sometimes it's a feeling. Sometimes it's peace. See, when you stand still regularly, you, you hear and feel all the ways the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And when it speaks to you and you feel peace, amen, John, a, a, still a quiet voice that says, the quiet voice, calm down. The quiet voice, calm down, Liz. Calm down. Peace comes over you. Because calm down is Holy Spirit saying, calm down so I can talk to you. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. Do I look like I'm calm? Okay. Calm down. No, that's not calm. You're still in panic. Holy Spirit said, calm down. you saying, okay. 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 No. Calm down. Take a chill pill. We always say it. Chill. Stand still. That's why I said that phrase. Chill is telling yourself, Calm down, flesh. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. When, when you're in panic, you can't hear the Holy Spirit. So you chill, stand still in the presence of the Lord so you can hear. Otherwise, you hear, all, you, hear, you hear God's voice. You hear the devil's voice. You hear your own voice. You hear all kinds of voices when you're in panic. Because you, you, don't, you don't know which one is real because you hear all the voices when you're panic. The reason you stand still is so you can hear the correct voice to be able to stand still and in the presence of the Lord and hear which way they'll go. See, in the, I keep using, I use the freeway example as a perfect parable because I actually prayed which way do I go. I prayed for it. He answered me. Now, the answer I heard was almost as fast as I asked the prayer. Lord, which way do I go? I'm approaching the freeway. Which way do I go? A strong feeling said, this way, a strong feeling, go this way. It didn't make sense to me. Lean not to your own understanding. The, the answer to my prayer didn't make sense. So in the flesh, I went the other way, and I paid for it. I prayed. He answered. I disobeyed, and, and it stopped. See, we pray. We got to trust the answer. And the answer, the answer God gives you doesn't cause panic. The only time... The only time it causes panic is if you doubt. The only time it causes panic is if you keep the stress in you and don't stand still. When you keep in a when you keep in a state of stress and panic, you're you're almost you're almost rebuking the peace the Holy Spirit is trying to give you because you refuse to stand still and you stay in panic. So you're ba you're basically rebuking the peace the Holy Spirit is trying to give you. And you're receiving the panic and the worry and the stress and the anxiety. Because, because you have to, the peace comes over you because God is peace. God is peace. So if I had just gone that way, if I just obey, the peace comes over you to let you know it's the right decision. 
And later, later down the road, you watch the news and find out the freeway you wanted to take had a major accident on it. And now it was stopped. It was blocked. See, later you find out that the Holy Spirit was right, even though you found out right then. Later you understand in the flesh why the Holy Spirit showed you which way to go. See, when you, when you obey, you have no idea what's going on. You're just obeying. But in all my ways, I acknowledge him, and he will direct my path. So when I obey and go the way he told me to go, I'm trusting. He just told me to go that way. I'm going to go that way. And however I'm going to get there, I know he's with me because he just told me to go this way. Whether I think so or not, he just told me to go the way that is normally too slow. So I'm going to go that way. Trust. See, that's, that's the lean not to your own understanding. That's how your own understanding can block the directions the Holy Spirit is trying to give you. And the spiritual awareness part is us listening to the Holy Spirit. If the, the Holy Spirit is telling you to be aware of something, beware. You may not even understand why. Just beware. The Holy Spirit says, be careful. Uh, uh, why are you going right now? Do you have to go right now? Sometimes, sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks through Jonah. He'll, like I, I gave you guys an example uh, two, two years ago. I was about to go to the store. And Sister John said, she said, do you really have to go now? Now, listen to this. I'm going to the store late night. And Sister John says, do you really have to go now? And something about the way she said that, I mean, in my spirit, it was like an alert. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I'm going, why did you say it like that? Why did you, why did you say that like that? You know what? You know what? I'm staying home. And that night, someone broke into her car and stole a car that I would have been taken to the store. So that means if I left, if I left when I wanted to leave, I would have probably interrupted the bandits that were breaking into our car and stole the car. Because that's about the time they estimated that it happened. So, so in that case, the Holy Spirit first spoke through John's voice. Do you really have to go now? And then the way I heard it, the way I heard it, see, the Holy Spirit spoke twice. First, the way she said, do you really have to go now? And then the way I heard it, yeah, do you really have to go now? It was almost like validation. She said it first, and the Holy Spirit said the same thing. Yeah, do you really have, do you, no, the Holy Spirit said, do you really want to go now? Jonah said, do you really have to go now? And then the Holy Spirit says, do you really want to go now? I said, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm staying home. <laughs> the way she said it and the way the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I said, you know what? I don't know what's going on. I'm staying home. I don't I, I don't need what I need that bad because I'm, I'm hearing something the way she never, she never said it like that before. I never heard it that way before. So something very strong in my spirit is saying, do you really have to go? No, I don't have to go. I'm staying home. And the car was broken into and vandalized that night and stolen. So see, this is why we have to obey. That's why this is why obedience is better than sacrifice. The Holy Spirit knows everything. Everything. John said in, in a dream, she saw me being attacked and left in the street by the teens that stole the car. See, and now she didn't she didn't tell me that part. She told me that part after. The the dream she, look on the screen. John said. In that dream, she had a dream that she saw me being attacked by the people who stole the car and left in the street by the teens. Now, now she didn't tell me that part, but just the way she said it let me understand some danger was involved. Now, I'm sharing this with you guys because whenever you go anywhere, we all, as, as followers of Christ, we need to pray before going anywhere. We need to pray before going anywhere we have no idea what's waiting when you leave the house we have no idea at work shopping we have no idea what's going on wherever you're going we have no idea what's waiting for you when you walk out that door so we need to pray before you walk out that door lord help me lord lord give me his psalm 91 protection lord bless my drive to and from my destination bless the car lord bless everything about what i've got bless everything i got to do right now bless every activity lord touch every activity i got to do today in jesus name cover cover your day we always talk about it but in this case in this case before i close in this case 
because of the chaos in this world, we need to specifically add, Lord, keep your hedge of protection over me as I go to and from my destination in Jesus' name. Keep your hedge of protection, Lord. Psalm 9 with protection over me to and from my destination and everything I got to do today in Jesus' name. Cover, cover, cover. Amen. Traffic accidents. Uh, ballistic people coming to work and shooting people. You don't you don't know what's going on. So much stuff is in this world right now. To be in the world and not of the world means we have to be prayed up before going into the world. Let me say it again. To be in the world and not of the world, we have to pray up before going into the world in order to not be taken over by the world. See, this, this is why the Holy Spirit is so important. Hey, Justine, this is why the Holy Spirit is so important, to, to, to let him tell us what to do throughout the day, to let him tell us how to react, when to go, what not to do, when to do it, who to call, not to call, when to go, when to move, not to move, everything, everything. <laughs> every, every area of your life. That's why it says, trust him with all your heart, not some, and lean out to your understanding in all your ways, in every part of your life, in all your ways, everything you do, in all your ways, all your ways, he'll direct our path. So that's where the trust comes in. Hey, woman of God, that's where the trust comes in. And this is, it's not easy. We know it's not easy. That's why you have to pray every day, praise every day, stand still every day. You have to feed the spirit every day in order to be strong enough to do this every day. Let me say it again. You got to feed the spirit every day in order to be strong enough to be able to stand still and do the things you need to do in the spirit every day. To be able to survive in all the chaos in this world right now that we see and we see and feel going on around us. So that's what this lesson today is about. The spiritual awareness is just, just, don't, just don't blindly walk out your door not thinking about what's, what could be ahead. Just always pray up. And get in the car, touch the car. I, I always touch the praise mobile. When I, you guys remember, I told you, uh, I, I put blessing oil in the praise mobile. And every time I, I, we go, we call our praise mobile, we gave the name Blue. Uh, I, we call our car Blue. But the praise mobile is called, his name is Blue, but we can name the car. So we say, hey, Blue, come on, Blue. God bless Blue today, Lord. Bless, bless the brakes, the car, the engine that help us get safely to and from our destination. Let the angels cover the car forward and back, above and beneath to get us to our destination and back in Jesus' name. And then you, then you start the car. <laughs> you see, that, that may sound silly, but you got you to gotta put a hedge of protection over everything. If you leave your house and, pick, and keep a hedge of protection on your house, you, you keep a, we pray over everything. Everything, everything. Keep a hedge of protection over anything that has to do with you, your loved ones, your job, wherever you go each day, your friends. Hedge of protection over everything. Hedge of protection over everything. Hedge of protection over everything. That's right, Gary. Add thing. <laughs> See, that's what it means. That's what I mean. Uh, uh, Teresa's testimony. Te uh, Teresa, make sure you put that testimony by the brakes. Uh, by the brakes. Uh, she had to uh, check out Teresa's testimony on lesson 10, 5, 50. M Teresa, make sure you put that testimony under lesson 10, 50 about her brakes, her brakes failing after she got out the car. See, we don't know why something happens all of a sudden and you get out of the car and, and all of a sudden it doesn't work. It worked when you were in there, but it doesn't work when you're out there. See, we never know when the Holy Spirit is protecting us. And you're thinking, you think it's just something normal. And then like, like you get out the day, you get out the day, you get out the out, out of your day and you find out, but that didn't work. But wait a minute, it worked when I was there. What do you mean that didn't work? Because the Holy Spirit made sure you got there. Remember last week? Last week we were in the heat and the phone, the phone went down to one percent. The phone uh, we, last last weekend, I think it was. The phone went down to one percent, and and uh, we were in the heat. And I prayed, God, I said, Lord, 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 bless the phone. Remember, remember this. I said, Lord, bless the phone that I'll be able to finish this lesson. And the 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 Lord touched the phone right after that prayer, and gave me thirty more minutes on the phone on one percent. Usually, when you get to one percent, it's too late. Cause one percent, bam. <laughs> 
<laughs> see, but see, God makes things work when they don't need to work. So when they, God makes things work when it looks like they shouldn't work. That's why I should say, that's that's God. See, that's when you say, that's when you say, but God. That's what God, that's what but God means. When you when you pray for something, and it's only because you need something that moment, and He moves, He ex, He extended the energy on the phone that day, or you pray you pray for enough gas to get home. All of a sudden, you get home, and then the car stops running because you run out of gas. But He gave you enough extension on the gas to make it home, and He blessed the engine to be able to get home, and then you get home, and the car won't start because it's out of gas. How come it didn't? How come it didn't run out of gas back when you saw it? The 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 the, the meter is on E. The meter is already on E. And you said, Lord, 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 bless the car, Lord. Bless me that I may be able to get home and not be stranded. Let me get home, Lord. And you get home. And now the car won't start. As soon as you get out the car, the car won't start because it's out of gas. Yet the car got you home because you prayed, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless the car, help me get home, Lord, help me get home. <laughs> Amen. Yo, who's going on? Oil and battery. Matter of fact, for those who, are, who knew the song, I'm blessed, here's another song, another song, the song, I'm blessed, came out of me. I got lost. I was, I was, I was, I was driving for Lyft, the Lyft ride share. And I dropped somebody off, and I didn't realize how low the gas was. So I said, I just go to a gas station. There was no gas station anywhere in sight where I dropped this person off. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my, my, my gas meter, and my gas meter, my gas meter is like touching the E. Now I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I didn't realize there were no gas stations. There are no gas stations anywhere. And I'm starting, I'm saying, oh, Lord, oh, okay, oh, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me get help me get somewhere where I can get gas. So I start driving, and all of a sudden, I'm blessed. Came in. I have no idea. I wouldn't write a song. I'm just driving the car. Okay, Lord, help me get there. I'm blessed. Don't you know I'm blessed? Oh yeah, I'm blessed. Don't 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 you know I'm blessed? Gas station. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Don't you know I'm blessed? And that's where that's where Melody came from. I was singing. I'm blessed. To help me stay calm. To if I broke down, I had no idea where I was. So if I called AAA, I would say I have no idea where I am because this is not an area I know. But I I sang that song. That song all of a sudden I turned a certain way, and there was a gas station. I had no idea where a gas station was. And the, and see because and and my my uh, my 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 phone at that time was in a what area where GPS didn't work. I was up in the mountains. And GPS doesn't work in mountains because the mountains are blocking the signal. So I couldn't even find out where a major street was. So I'm just saying I'm blessed as I'm driving and turning left. I'm blessed turning right. I'm turning left, turning right. I'm blessed. Don't you know I'm blessed? I'm blessed. Don't you know I'm blessed? Gas station. Thank you, Jesus. Do, do, do. <laughs> he's, he's guiding every turn. He says, turn right, turn left. I'm just turning right, turn left. I'm trying to look not look not lean, not my own understanding, because I don't know what each turn is. I'm turning left, I'm turning right, I'm turning left, I'm going in circles, I'm turning right, I'm turning left. I have no idea. And all of a sudden, bam, gas station. Now, that's because I'm turning when he said turn. I had no idea where I was. This is a perfect example. He was guiding the turns. He said, turn right here. I just turned right. Go, hey, what's there to lose? I don't know where I am. Turn right. Okay, Lord. Oh, turn left. Okay, Lord. Turn right. Okay, Lord. Turn left. Gas station. <laughs> that place looked like a maze. That section looked like a maze. The streets were like a maze, all curled up and stuff. I would never have found it. If, if I just didn't turn when God said turn, if I had not turned when God said turn, I would have been still, I'd still been probably driving in circles, singing I'm blessed. <laughs> but, but the whole point of the whole lesson today is spiritual awareness is when he's talking to us about good things, bad things, big things, little things. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what you're going through. He is talking to us about everything. Amen, Carissa. Amen. See? Amen, Teresa. He he's talking to us about everything. So when you understand the Holy Spirit is talking to us about everything, when you're being spiritual aware, spiritual spiritual awareness is meaning we are listening to everything he's saying. 
You're being aware of whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you about everything, where you go, when, how, what, who, everything. And that's what spiritual awareness is about. It's listening consciously, repeatedly, and undeterred from listening to the Holy Spirit's voice in whatever you're going through in your life. And that's what I'll, I'll close with that. That's just, we just keep trusting. We just keep trusting. We say it all the time. I must trust. I must trust. And when you obey the Holy Spirit, whether it makes sense or not, when you obey the Holy Spirit, whether it makes sense or not, you're trusting. And that's what trusting is. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct my path. Trust that. Trust that, and you won't regret it. Amen. We got, see, we, 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 let's close. We close our favorite statement. I must trust. Let's say it together. I must trust. One more time. I must trust. The perfect peace. The perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because I trust. That's what it is. The perfect peace is because we trust. Your mind is stayed on him because we trust. It's the key to everything. The peace of mind and all the things we're trying to figure out in life. When you stand still and trust, have no fear, stand still. I trust. The Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. I trust. Be still and know that I am God. I trust. We got to trust this stuff. You got to trust the word. Trust his promises. And know that he is, that he is. I am, sit you. I am whatever it is you need me to be. I am. And I must trust. Without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And you seek him when you trust him. And he's a rewarder. He blesses your trust. He blesses your trust with favor, with blessings, with, with supernatural movement in your life because you're trusting him and you lean not your understanding. And you're letting him, you're letting him direct your path. Amen. Amen. So that's what it's all about. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. We have to make sure we do that. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, Teresa, that's, that's, on the, that's on the lesson 1050, Teresa. Leave that under lesson 1050. Praise God. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord. We, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you right now for all the ways you're moving right now, Lord, in the fellowship, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for blessing the fellowship every need, Lord. We know you. we feel your presence in this place. We feel your presence in this place, Lord. And we know we know that you are still in charge. We know that no matter what we're going through right now, you are still in charge. And we say thank you right now, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. As we commit right now as a fellowship to trust. We commit as a fellowship to trust. We must trust. As we leave this place, Lord, we just ask right now for your supernatural hand of protection to continue to bless everyone in this fellowship, whatever they're going through in their life right now, Lord. Thank you for all the ways you're moving, all the ways you're blessing, all the ways you're healing, all the ways you're taking care of us, Lord. We thank you right now. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God. Praise God. As we get ready to close, as always, someone's watching the lesson who doesn't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So right now, as I do the closing prayer, salvation and the closing prayer, please no typing during the next two prayers. Anything typed during prayer time, especially, will be deleted out of respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to a person listen, who's been listening the whole lesson. You've been listening, but you're not connected. You hear the praise and the worship and the fellowship and the message, but you're still, you're still crying. You've been crying the entire time because your life is falling apart. 
darkness in your life, negativity, worry, stress is overwhelming you right now. And you may even feel suicidal right now. And you have nowhere to turn. Yet somehow, you find yourself on this channel listening to this message. And you have no idea how you got here. That's because God sees the pain and suffering you're going through right now. You're not here by accident. God brought you here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into a world of sin. And now the devil's been knocking you every which way but loose and telling you, once you fail God, you can never go back. And that right there is a, is a lie of the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you've been walking as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again and there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. First of all, every day, spend time with God. Every day, spend time with God. And first of all, before I do that, if you've been listening and you you and been walking in darkness and negativity and worry, or you've been walking as a backslider, I want you to pray with me right now. Pray with me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on a cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and to also convict us when you're not walking in God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing in your life right now, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to reverse it. First of all, every day, like I said earlier, spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your, feed your faith and starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you feel, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship, Rebuke and bind the spirit's retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named or unnamed, seen or unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation, participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you came. In Jesus' name. And Father God, Loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose, peace beyond understanding. Loose, restoration, Lord. Restore every area of our life. Lucas, loose reconciliation, Lord. Loose reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep a hedge of protection over all the marriages and families who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, emotional healing, physical healing, spiritual healing. By your stripes, we were healed. And we confess it every day, Lord. We confess it every day. I believe I've received my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I've received my healing in the name of Jesus every day. Live it, see it, breathe it, speak it. Confess it. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance, Lord. Blessings of abundance. Rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship. Every financial need. Whatever it is, large or small. For you shall supply all our need. According to... To your riches in glory, for Christ Jesus. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything when the Lord is my shepherd. For we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the lender and not the borrower. We are blessed going in, blessed going out. We are blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know as a, as a fellowship, we know every day, every day, visualize it, see it, see your miracle, see it every day, see it, believe it, receive it in your heart. And once you receive it in your heart, expect it, expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means... Any day you wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you've been praying for. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to, a blessing to everyone you pray over, a blessing to everyone you pass by, because the light of the Lord is all over you 24-7, 365 days a year, including leap year. Amen. All these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the fellowship say, Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs>